In our current world, the concept of culture and the idea of a cultural divide feel like the reasoning behind so much of the disagreement that takes place. Take, for example, the political polarization and unrest in our country. When we see politicians from different political parties interacting with each other on TV, or even just watch news about politics in general, we can literally feel the tension through our screens. Culture is at the center of issues such as racism, immigration, gender equality, and so much more. And in every single one of these issues is a deeply rooted divide between every side of the argument. Maybe that's all culture can do, create huge, possibly permanent rifts in our society. Maybe we just have to accept that culture isn't meant to bring people together, but instead separate groups of people from one another. So the questions stand, what is the cultural divide? Does it really exist? Or is it just an excuse for a lack of understanding? For my entire life, I felt the presence of a divide in my cultural identity. As a second generation American, I've always felt like I've had to live two different lives, an at-home Indian life and an outside American life. In my at-home life, I'm completely immersed in Indian culture and customs. I eat Indian food, celebrate Indian festivals, and speak Telugu, my parents' native language. But as time passed, I started to focus more on my American side. And going to school and hanging out with my friends drew me toward my American life and away from my Indian life. I was slowly losing my connection with Indian culture. When I went to India a couple of years ago, my grandpa took me to a neighbor's house. And when the neighbor asked my grandpa if I knew Telugu, he said, nope, he doesn't know it at all. Now, when I was little, I was actually fluent in Telugu, but as I grew older, I lost my touch with it. So what my grandpa said was kind of true, but I could still understand Telugu perfectly. So in my head, I was like, hey, I'm right here. I can understand exactly what you're saying right now. At the time, I didn't dwell too much on this interaction, but as I thought about it more, I could literally feel the separation between me and my connection to Indian culture growing at that point. Being part of the first generation in my family to be born in the United States, I've always felt a sort of responsibility to maintain Indian culture away from India. I needed to stop this growing separation somehow, so I tried to immerse myself in the Indian cultural activities that were such a vital component of my childhood. But it just didn't feel the same. As I continued to search for ways to reconnect with my culture, I took the opportunity to volunteer for PURE, which stands for People for Urban and Rural Education. PURE is a nonprofit organization that works in the countries India, Nepal, Ethiopia, Uganda, and right here in the United States to make sure that underprivileged children receive the education they deserve. In my mind, I thought that PURE wouldn't solve my problems of cultural reconnection, but maybe it would help me get closer to the answers. Even if volunteering my time to raise funds and spread awareness for Pierce cause didn't directly achieve my goals, knowing that I was making a positive impact on people with the same culture and roots as me was enough for me to be okay with the stasis of my intercultural crisis. So I kept going. Then, in late 2019, a few friends and I took the opportunity to teach virtual classes through Peer to two rural village high schools in India. I hoped that this experience would provide some exposure to my culture, but I was skeptical mainly because I wasn't sure how much the students and I would truly relate to each other. After all, I was American and they were Indian. Would the cultural divide be too broad or would I be able to bridge the gap? Leading up to the first class, I'll be honest, I was pretty nervous. There were so many silly questions running through my head. What do I say? What if I mess up? What do they think of me? But as soon as I entered the class, all my nerves went away. Maybe it was the way they were all patiently waiting to learn but the moment I saw them, I felt comfortable. The first class and the rest of the classes after always ran smoothly. They would always be fun and productive, but for me, the best part of every class was the last 10 minutes of it, because during this time, we would just chat with the students about their lives and ours. Even though we were supposed to be teaching during this time, these discussions proved to be more valuable than teaching ever could be. Both us and the students felt like we were talking to people in completely different worlds than our own. And to have the chance to talk to each other about our vastly different experiences was an amazing opportunity. Even though this time was so short, it allowed me to create some really meaningful relationships with students thousands of miles away. I learned that one girl made it to a national cycling contest and two girls won a state soccer competition. As more classes passed, they would even begin to open up to us more. 
when we would lecture, they would laugh and tease us about our American accents, and they would also laugh at how we spelled some words differently than they did. I remember one time, one of us spelled the word color as C-O-L-O-R, and the entire class burst out laughing because we forgot the U, which led to an entire discussion about the differences between American and British English. Being a tutor also helped me reconnect with Telugu, which I really appreciate. A lot of times we would need to use Telugu to communicate with the students, and even though I still have a long way to go, just having the chance to think about how a sentence or phrase would be said in Telugu has helped me improve a lot. As more classes pass, we became closer and closer. Eventually, they even began to address us as Anna, the word for older brother in Telugu. There it was. After so much thinking, so much searching, so much disappointment, I had finally found what I was looking for, reconnection with my heritage. Being a virtual class tutor taught me that a cultural divide definitely exists, and there's no denying it. But it doesn't look exactly the way I thought it did. Before, I saw the divide as something so large that even trying to jump across wouldn't work. But now I see that crossing the divide is as easy as stepping over it. All you have to do is make the effort to get to the other side. And honestly, there are a lot more similarities between cultures than there are differences. And even though these similarities may seem small, they can be used to create strong, meaningful relationships. The students and I may differ in our Indianness, but at our cores, we're simply branches of the same 5,000 year old tree of Indian culture that simply grew in different directions. In the roots of the tree are the traditions, family values, and struggles we share. And these will remain no matter how far apart the branches are from each other. Maybe we differed culturally and were separated geographically, but we were never truly divided. Being a tutor also helped me realize that those who have the privilege of being connected to multiple national identities, like me and so many other students in America, have the gift of picking out the best parts of each of them and combining these pieces without having to give up the experiences of the cultures we are a part of. We have the ability to create our own personal experiences and learn from the pros and cons of our cultures so that we can help them grow and evolve. But what surprised me most about my tutoring experience was how much I learned about the concept of culture itself. Looking back now at both my childhood and recent experiences with Indian culture, I understand how important it is to recognize that cult culture isn't just ethnicity. Sociologist George Simmel, a pioneer in cultural studies, said that culture refers to the cultivation of individuals through the agency of external forms which have been objectified in the course of history. Now, when I first read this, I had absolutely no idea what it meant, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys don't either, so let me break it down some more. Culture is in the most basic sense literally any way of thinking or acting that defines a group of people, which means culture can be any hobby or interest you want it to be. And if that's all culture is, doesn't that mean we're already a part of a bunch of cultures? Along with Indian culture, the students and I were part of the same student culture, sports culture, and even within India, Telugu culture, which allowed us to relate through language. These similarities can be the key, not just for me, for uh, relationships, but for anyone who's willing to cross the divide. We've been finding commonalities between cultures for our entire lives, and now all we need to do is keep doing it, because making more connections is what leads to understanding. So, how do people, regardless of what national identities they're connected to, make connections that last? Before I answer this question, I first have to explain what cultural norms and cultural gatekeepers are. If culture is the way of thinking and acting that defines a group of people, then cultural norms are the ways of thinking and acting that are normal for that group of people. And that's where the problem lies, normal. Who has the right to decide whether something is normal or not? That's where cultural gatekeepers come into play. Lynn Maureen Hurdle, author and speaker at TEDx Women in 2012, says that cultural gatekeepers are the members of a culture that are so dedicated to its norms that they alienate and stand against those who act against the norms in any way. She says that when these gatekeepers are strong enough, it forces members to conform leading to the suppression of so many different forms of expression and thought processes. So to answer my question on how to make connections that last, my answer is simply acceptance. It can go a long way. Think about it this way. If you were about to take your step across the cultural divide, would you rather see an angry looking person blocking your path or someone with their arms stretched out guiding you over? For example, look at how fashion and clothing companies have opened their doors to plus size models in recent years. Instead of gatekeeping and following the norm that models need to be thin and wear smaller sizes, 
these companies accepted plus size models for who they are, without criticism or rejection, leading to increased representation and the encouragement of body positivity. Now, I understand that acceptance isn't always easy, and cultural norms are built upon generations of people. But the key to starting to break these norms is just being okay with change and understanding that change is natural. This might feel like a daunting task, but to get the most out of culture's true capabilities, we have to start somewhere. Culture can be used to, used to divide, but its purpose is and has always been to connect us with each other. Michelle Obama once said, here in America, we don't let our differences tear us apart. Not here, because we understand that our greatness comes from when we appreciate each other's strengths, when we learn from each other, when we lean on each other. Because in this country, it's never been each person for themselves. No, we're all in this together. We always have been. So I urge you all to venture into unknown territory and discover the richness of the world around you. Because discovering our similarities, making meaningful connections, and understanding our differences is one of the best ways that we can make our world a better place. We all have the power to cross the divide. Will you join me? Thank you.